In this video, I'm going to show you how I make my YouTube thumbnails using Photoshop. Okay, this process for me has evolved. I, I would love to be able to go back and show you the original Photoshop file that I started with. But what I have on my screen right now is its current version. And every time I add new elements to it, you know, uh, for the purpose of making this really simple, uh, you know, and, and of course this, this file has evolved and doesn't even look originally like what it did at first. But, uh, you know, I've kept the same PSD file uh, because of course it has all the different layers that I'm going to need uh, you know, in a typical thumbnail. Let me turn all the layers off and we'll just kind of go one by one through everything that I would typically add for a thumbnail here. So we'll just turn off everything and just go one by one here. So when I'm creating a thumbnail, I'm thinking about what the topic itself is. All right, so I have a blank um, project file. Now I've added some guides here and you'll see their importance a little bit, but it's just basically to create some safety space around the different elements. And I have sort of a generic background that I start with, but more often than not, I visit my stock photography site and I find a background that's appropriate for whatever it is that I'm doing. So for example, if I was doing something with audio, I might use this waveform effect. Uh, let's see what else I've done here. Um, this was used for navigation related uh, topics. And uh, let's see what else I have in this list of things. A lot of times it's just simply a blurred background, whether it's some bokeh effects or you know, just maybe like a chalkboard effect. But again, I try to let the, uh, the inspiration come from the topic. You know, when I reviewed my latest iPad, I put one of the uh, wallpapers for iPad in there. Uh, but a lot of times it's just a, an abstract background. And uh, let's just pick one for the purposes of what we're doing here today. I'll pick this purple one here. It's kind of nice. Now, the next thing I go and think about is the image of myself. I think it's really important to put an image of a human being. And of course, these videos are, are largely about me uh, sharing my knowledge and experience. So I'll select an image such as this one here. Uh, let's delete the layer mask. So literally, this was a photo uh, just from my office. This is from when my old office, actually, there's even some luggage in the background. So maybe I just got back from a, a trip. And the easiest way to do select and mask in, in Photoshop is to just use the select drop down menu and select select and mask. Uh, over the years, this has uh, become easier and easier. You can literally select subject and then just clean it up a little bit here. So this should, uh, I like using this, this red background. It, it really uh, helps to identify whether you've selected the right area. I see some problems there. So we're just going to zoom in maybe 200% here and just get nice and close right there between, uh, you know, my hand and my face there. There's some stuff that we would want to add here. So we'll uh, click on minus and just take that out. And usually it does a pretty good job there. And you may also want to do plus and just make sure, you know, that you're not blurring out something that's important here, like your hands or whatever. Um, that looks pretty good. You know, and depending on you know how it looks sometimes i'll go in and i'll touch up things like the light in my eyes or you know if i see a speck on my shirt this one's not too bad because of course it's a patterned shirt but you know if i see a little speck on there or if i see something on my face like a mole or uh, you know i could go in and i got some pores on my nose there so you can use um, you know the uh, spot healing brush to 
maybe take those out a little bit and or at least just smooth them out a little bit just to make it look a little more natural so that's pretty much it and of course i've kept all these photos over the years and i can apply different ones depending on again the topic that i'm i'm choosing here uh, above those the next layer above those are the bar that you see over on the left hand side and i've got a few different colors mostly what i use is green because i you know that's sort of the traditional color with adobe captivate but you know if i'm doing something on photoshop i might put the blue field in that background there uh, next of course is the title of the video itself and um, in this in this case here i'm using uh, i've used a variety of fonts over the years but most recently I've used uh, Kyriel or Kyriel Sans Pro. And the reason for that is it's very close to the Adobe Clean font. Um, I could use the Adobe Clean font. I happen to have a copy of it, but it was given to me for the purposes of when I worked with Adobe. So I thought it would be, uh, you know, it is a copyrighted font. So I guess I should really not use it for my own stuff. So here I've used uh, Kyriel or Kyriel, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. And then I usually, you know, uh, for something like a title where I'm saying the top five Snagit skills for e-learning, I'll go in and um, increase the font size usually to the point where, you know, it's not too large and then adjust the, um, the space between the lines themselves. So there's enough space there. So that looks pretty good. Um, the next layers are, let's see here, there's a few examples where I've placed other objects in the thumbnail, like an example of the project that I'm going to be developing, um, little objects that, you know, might help or accentuate the, the thumbnail itself. The Captivate Teacher logo, and this of course is also written in Kyriel or Kyriel Sans Pro. And then I have a series of, uh, let's keep that one up. I have a series of logos that I might use. So if there's an Apple product I'm talking about or the Photoshop logo, I place that on the top of the sidebar there. More often than not, I have the Captivate logo. And this actually doesn't exist at Adobe. Uh, I suspect it will at some point, but um, I try to copy the current set of icons that are from the creative cloud but apply what i think the future version of captivate might do if it follows that same pattern so you know this is a creation of my own but uh obviously based on on what i suspect um adobe will actually come out with so again this is um this is pretty much uh complete here this is not a real thumbnail that i'm going to use but if I click on file and export as JPEG, and then I simply save it to my desktop, and then I upload it for the latest YouTube video that I'm bringing up to YouTube. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.